before the white men came, you know, the Autumn people were self-efficient. Autumn people were very physical, you know, because they were working. You know, they had to work for their food. They had to work to survive. You know, they went hunting. They had to maybe walk for miles to look for, for rabbit or deer. Or, you know, they had to go to a specific area by foot to pick choya buds or, or saguaro fruit or mesquite beans, you know, and they were moving. You know, they were healthy, you know, but also in Autumn culture, you ran. You know, we were runners. This is our culture. This was the Autumn Himatag. For Autumn people, the rain ceremonies were the most important ceremonies because they were the ones that were bringing the rain to water the plants, to water the desert, that would um, bring life to the desert. When the white men came, we were told what to do, you know, we were being taken away from the fields, you know, the, the children were being thrown into boarding schools, you know, and there weren't, um, there weren't people there to do the, the ceremonies, to have, I guess, a sense of ownership or a sense of carrying the tradition alive. Well, one of the big changes that happened um, for Autumn culture, especially relating to food and, and farming, was the groundwater that was being pumped out from the outside. Farmers on the borders of the reservation pumping for their fields, so they were depleting the aquifers. So, you know, the water has been taken. That affected uh, that village and the farms, you know, definitely affected the health of the Autumn people because they weren't getting the foods that they grew from those farms. And when you took that away, the only thing that was available was probably store food, you know, flour, lard, and sugar. That wasn't healthy. Well, there was a bigger loss than just, you know, the health. It affected the culture. The Atlam Himadak, that was the biggest loss I see. When everybody was taken away, a lot of the ceremonies weren't performed. When you're planting the seeds, when you're preparing the, the soil, you know, there's ceremonies and songs and prayers that you do. And none of that was performed because, you know, there wasn't going to be a crop. There wasn't anybody there to plant. Things weren't collected, you know, it was not only the food, it was the medicine, you know, a lot of the herbs that, that the Autumns used from the desert, you know, things like that, and it just snowballed into what we're dealing with now. Doing that genetic research, it's fine, but it doesn't create solutions. It disempowers people because it says there's something wrong with you rather than that there's something that you can do. And it also disempowers the community and says that the solution is really in um, the hands of a laboratory and of the medical community. And what we're saying is no, the solution is in the hands of the individuals and families and villages of the Altham community. Well, we started um, Thana Autumn Community Action about 10 years ago, the summer of 96. The idea of Toga was to bring back a lot of the Autumn Himadak to the community, to have a program that could invite elders to come and share their knowledge and share their culture with anybody who was willing to learn. Four programs started. You know, we have the Basket Weavers Organization. We have the, the Cultural Foods um, Project. We have the Elderly Youth Outreach Program and the arts and culture program. You know, and all those programs focus around the autumn culture and intertwine. We're hitting all those important elements in the culture. It's not just the food, it's the language, it's the ceremonies. It's that process of, of autumn life. I think it's really important for the ideas and the actions to come from the community because it gives a sense of ownership, a sense of being in charge. We rely on the community. You know, they're the ones who tell us that they need this. They're the ones who tell us that you know, there's certain things that you need to focus on or do. So when you have a social gathering, you're bringing everybody from the community, not only your family, but the whole community. You know, and if you're working on a project, like say you're having a planting day and you need people to go out and help plant the seeds in the, in the ground, you know, you're building that, again, ownership and that sense of belonging, that sense of pride. I think over the 10 years, we've proven to the community that, you know, we're, we're here and we can't go away because we're actually part of the community. You know, everybody that works at Toka are, are from the community. You know, we're all the people working to, to keep our culture alive and people see that. 
how we got this land for our farm, our first farm was, it came out of uh, trying to find a way how to um, pay respects and honor my grandfather because he was a farmer. And at that time, when Toka started um, working uh, to bring back a lot of the traditional foods, we, um, we thought about land and that meant us going to the family and getting the family's blessing. We sat the family down and we actually talked to them about them giving us this land, you know, to do our first farming for Toka. And we sat there and we actually gave uh, the whole family our spiel about Toka and why, what the benefits were and, you know, they, they liked it and they, they all agreed that my grandfather would have liked that. We actually had to bring my grandmother out to actually map out the area. We pretty much just spent the day out here following my grandmother. Once my grandmother would remember things, my aunts would jump in and say, yeah, and then stories started coming out. I had a camera, so it was really nice that I actually got it documented, but I didn't think at the time we all knew what we were getting ourselves into and how much of an impact it would have made on our family, but also on Entoka and the community. We always say at Etoka, you know, we look back to the past to create solutions for the future. That's what we're doing, and after 10 years, it's definitely working. Not all of the culture will get back, but you know, we keep going and, and learning as much as we can, and we're keeping it alive. And it's definitely helping us bring back the culture, bring back the ceremonies, the language, but also bring back our health.